The original Deus Ex is a wicked game. Combining the gameplay and design philosophies of Thief, System Shock, and Ultima with conspiracy theories from the early internet era, Deus Ex shaped the way in which modern games handle big concepts, like player choice, interactive storytelling, and immersive world building. Not all games with a profound influence still hold up today, but the soundtrack, dialogue, pacing, and replayability of Deus Ex make it worthy of the memes. And considering that many of the game's conspiracies and predictions are more relevant than ever, now is the perfect time to play it. It's one of my all-time favourites, but there's no denying that certain aspects of it have aged about as well as your mom has. Chances are, if you're into PC gaming, you probably tried to play Deus Ex at one point or another. But given how most people I know have never made it past Liberty Island, I thought I'd make this guide for people who struggle to get into the game, or for new players who want to know what all the fuss is about. So let's get stuck into it and talk about mods. First up, you're going to want to install Kenti's Launcher, also known as Deus Exe. It adds support for higher resolutions, UI scaling, fixes the FOV, and lets you choose from a bunch of different rendering solutions. As always, I'll be linking all these mods down below, along with how to install them, so your older brother won't call you gay when you ask him for help. After that, you're also going to need Kenti's Unreal Engine Direct3D 10 renderer. Just drop those files into the Deus Ex system folder and select Direct3D 10 support in Kenti's launcher to get it going. This renderer uses the full power of the original Unreal Engine, and it's the only solution if you want to record or stream the game without visual bugs. The only downside is this very annoying new lighting engine which artificially darkens a lot of the game world, and makes bright moments look very blown out and ugly. Some people seem to like it, but I think it's poorly implemented, unfaithful to the original graphics, and worst of all, it gets in the way of gameplay. Luckily, we can turn it off by hitting T on the keyboard in-game, typing preferences into the chat and hitting enter, going to Direct3D 10 rendering, and changing classic lighting from false to true. Now we can enjoy the game as it was meant to be viewed, with all the benefits of a modern rendering solution. If you just want to play the game as Ion Storm intended and keep things as vanilla as possible, then you don't have any more installing to do. This is how I personally play the game, but there are two more mods that I should probably mention. New Vision is a texture pack that replaces around 80% of the environmental textures with high resolution counterparts. A lot of texture packs for old games have that bizarre photorealistic thing going on, and it always looks like complete shit. But New Vision stays pretty faithful to the original game, and I'd have no problem recommending it if you really can't stand old graphics. I don't speak Chinese yet, but apparently New Vision changes the signs written in Mandarin to completely racist gibberish. Seems a little unnecessary to me, but I guess it does fit with the game's voice acting. Mr. J.C. Denton, in the fresh. I spill my drink. Let alone. I don't work with a voice. We're from Australia. Many other Buddhas in Hong Kong. You're so bad. The other mod is GMDX, or Give Me Deus Ex. GMDX is an overhaul mod that aims to bring Deus Ex more in line with the modern gaming experience. It adds new mechanics like a stamina bar, mantling, auto-saving, as well as overhauling the enemy AI, character leveling, and ranged combat. People nut in their pants over this mod, but I'm just not the biggest fan of it. The claim that it's just vanilla Deus Ex but better just isn't true. While it does have a good deal of nice quality of life features, I just don't think it's worth all the extra crap it tacks on. The stamina bar for normal running is unnecessary and obnoxious, the head bobbing is awkward, quick saves are disabled in favour of auto saves, which destroys all the fun of experimentation, the balancing is off for reasons outside the scope of this video, and it just changes too much for me to recommend it for new players. You can turn most of the annoying new changes off, but at that point you may as well just play vanilla and get the real original experience without all the extra crap. It wouldn't be a late 90s PC game if half of the skills you could pick weren't completely misleading or useless. For starting out, a good balance is to invest in lockpicking, computer, electronics, and low-tech weaponry. Locking and hacking are very useful for getting into places you shouldn't be, and low-tech weaponry is worth it for stealth takedowns, which we'll be getting into later. As the game goes on, you should definitely branch out into other skills, but there are a few I'd stay away from. Swimming isn't as useless as everyone says, but you can use the rebreather item for most of the times when it would come in handy. Likewise, the hazmat suits also make environmental training pretty redundant. Grenades and disarming traps works well enough that you don't need to invest in demolition, and leveling up your medicine is negated by the regeneration org you'll get halfway through the game. Scattered throughout the game are these augmentation canisters, which give the player new abilities to muck around with. With each canister, you get a choice of two abilities to choose from, some of which can be pretty misleading. 
The most useful ones are health regeneration, microfibril muscles, cloak, aggressive defense system, speed enhancement, power recirculator, and targeting or vision enhancement. The orgs you definitely want to stay away from, at least on a first playthrough, are Aqualong, Run Silent, and Environmental Resistance. With all that said though, as long as you get the regeneration org and dump some points into lockpicking and hacking, you can't mess up too bad. The Deus Ex design philosophy is all about player freedom, and the final game does a pretty good job at following that idea. Being a PC game from 20 years ago, not everything in Deus Ex works like it probably should. But when you finally get into the groove of some of these old mechanics, you're going to find yourself playing for hours at a time. First up, let's talk about stealth and takedowns. The baton, riot prod, and pepper spray are going to be your best friends here. JC starts off with the riot prod, but the baton can easily be found right here in the first area, and pepper spray can be found in most levels. To knock out guards with the baton, you're going to make sure your skill with low-tech weaponry is set to train. This isn't like Thief, where you can just bonk an enemy anywhere on the back and just be done with it. Make sure you're as close as possible to the enemy, and hit them in the lower back above their pelvis. If you're crouched and sneaking towards them, you can get as close as you like without setting them off. If you mess up and the enemy has body armor, you can just keep whacking them in the back until they eventually go down too. Pepper spray and the riot prod are very useful for situations where it might not be possible to get behind the enemy. Depending on your positioning, one poke from the prod is all you need to knock them out, or put them in a stun state if you shock them from the front. You can knock out enemies by continuing to shock them, but it's a big waste of prod ammo. Instead, it's way more efficient to hit them just once from the side or front, then circle around to knock them out with the baton. Same sort of deal with the pepper spray, except this can be used to incapacitate multiple enemies at once, leaving them open to a takedown. An enemy that's been sprayed will usually go down with two whacks from your baton, or one shock from the prod. Before you start the first mission, Paul is going to offer you a choice between taking a sniper rifle, a mini crossbow, or a rocket launcher type weapon called the Gap Gun. It is a bit of a meme to tell new players to take the Gap Gun, and don't get me wrong, this thing is an absolute laugh and a half. But it also takes up a shitload of inventory space, which is going to restrict your item experimentation early on, and you can easily find one a few hours in once it starts being useful. The sniper rifle is a beast if you want to put points into it and go lethal, but I think the tranquilizer crossbow ends up being more useful for most people. Unless you're playing with GMDX, the crossbow isn't the takedown machine you think it would be. Even if you pull off a headshot, chances are the enemy is going to take a few moments to be fully knocked out by the poison. They can still run around in this state and pull an alarm or alert other guards, so the crossbow should really only be used when it's too dangerous to do a takedown in the open. When you're well hidden and stuck in a pinch though, the crossbow can be really effective at picking enemies off at a distance to give you some breathing room. Firearms in general are pretty unwieldy even when you put points into them. But they are more useful than you think if you get spotted and have to go dicks out on the bad guys. Ammo doesn't take up any inventory slots, so you should always take some when you can. The default controls are okay, but you'll definitely want to rebind a few things immediately. I mean, who's trying to zoom in with the left bracket key? Exploration is absolutely key. Just like Thief 1 and 2, you should always be taking your time to explore every little nook and cranny of a level. Hack computers to read emails, pick locked doors, talk to NPCs, and don't stress about having a perfect playthrough. This isn't like the later Deus Ex games where you're really rewarded for perfectly stealthy gameplay. You should always be quick saving often, but if you mess up and have to start blasting, it's also okay to just go with it. The game does expect you to take a mostly covert approach, but it's also built around the fun of using lethal weapons and blowing shit up. Experimentation and making things up as you go along are core philosophies of the Deus Ex experience, so for your first playthrough, don't try and roleplay too hard. A lot of people don't like the first level or find it too difficult, but if you just push yourself a little and make it to New York, most people find that's where they really get hooked and start loving the game. And that's about it! If you have any questions about the game or you want to call me a wanker for not recommending GMDX, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to respond. The Deus Ex series is part of that whole immersive sim genre, along with games like Thief, Stalker, Dishonored, and the System Shock games. Games with a heavy emphasis on player choice and emergent gameplay within a smaller scale open world. Deus Ex is definitely one of the best in the genre, but if you've never played anything like this before, you might be better off starting with something a bit more modern and forgiving. Deus Ex Human Revolution did a brilliant job of reviving the series for modern audiences, and it's one of my favourite games of that generation. With tight gameplay that stayed faithful to its roots and a world packed with plenty of soul and charm, the series really came back swinging with this one. It's a great introduction to the genre, and seeing as it's a prequel, you don't need any knowledge of the Deus Ex world to enjoy it. 
But if you're looking for something with killer writing and more opportunities for character role-playing, you gotta play Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Might be one of the horniest games ever made, but Bloodlines is so much more than goth dancing and vampire boobs. It's about as infinitely replayable as Dark Souls 1 is, and the mood, mechanics and characters are gonna keep you coming back to this one for years. I am the proprietor and salesman of the month several years in a row. The ladies call me, oh God, but you can call me Fat Larry with a F-A-T, cause I know I got a weight problem, I just don't give a fuck. Just make sure you grab the unofficial patch too, cause Bloodlines is a seriously buggy game in its vanilla state. And would you look at that, we're at the end of the video. As always, I want to give a big thanks to my mum and the boys for making it all the way to the end of the video. Thanks again, and I'll see you when I see you.